Hey, Greg, how are you doing? Hey, hey. You know, to tell you the truth, I'm really doing awful. I mean, it's Mercury retrograde, and uh, you know, I, I don't have a co-host, and I don't even have a guest for the show. And you know, I'm looking for somebody really big, somebody with like, you know, like a, a, a voluminous voice who's made a dent in the music scene. And I, I can't even seem to to find anybody. And I don't know. I mean, I've been looking everywhere, and I, you know, it's like it's it's not as if the universe would drop this person like right in front of my nose or anything. And I'm just like, I, I don't know what what to what to do. And you know, and this is a show like the dozens of people who are watching this and in television land are, are relying on me to come up with this. <sighs> oh, God, you know, you, oh, you know what, I'm really sorry. This, I'm so stupid. That's okay. Um, we are. Do you, know, do, do you know of anybody that I can get? I can't show? think of anybody. Oh. Hey there, I'm Greg Archer, and you're watching GTV, and this is Sister Monica. Hey. Hey. Filling in for Kim Luke, who is off on assignment somewhere in Warrior Basketballville. Um, really? Yeah, she's, you know, she's the MC for the for the Warriors. Oh. She's okay. yeah, she's pretty amazing, and she, and the Derby Girls. Oh, the wow. new season is starting on Saturday, so she's you know the announcer for that too. That girl gets around. She does get around. I heard. Yeah. <laughs> Kim, have you heard about that? <laughs> if you're watching in TV land over there, Kim, somewhere on assignment. Um, so we have Sister Monica here hey. in the house tonight. Thank you for being here. Yeah, I'm glad um, to be here. Yeah, it's really great that you're here. And, and you're watching GTV, which is an extension of Good Times newspaper. And uh, tonight, uh, you, well, you know, you're here, and we're going to be talking to you about a lot of things, and yes. you're going to be performing, which is great. Very excited about okay. that. Um, but first, uh, a, a few things uh, to let viewers know and, and readers know about what's coming up in good times in the next couple of weeks. We have a, a Derby Girls cover coming oh, wow. up, which actually Kim Luke wrote. It's sort of a love letter to the Derby Girls, and it sort of previews their, not only their upcoming season, but talks about how effective they are. And, okay. and yeah, it's kind of cool. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, because those girls are kind of fierce, right? Yeah, they are fierce. Yeah. Force of nature. Force of nature. Yeah. Yeah, fierce and force of nature. Yeah. So we have that coming up. We have a home and garden issue coming up because, you know, everyone in Santa Cruz has a garden and a home of some yes, sort. Yes, of course. And we're all juicing and doing everything else. <laughs> Growing something. Yeah. Are you keen whying? I'm keen whying. No, I'm collard greening. You're collard greening. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I might have to wean myself off of the quinoa. Um, and then, other than that, the best of Santa Cruz issue is coming up. Ooh, and yeah, it's pretty cool. That's exciting. So uh, yeah. this year, more votes than ever before. So we're really? Kinda, yeah, it's kind of okay. it's kind of cool. Before we get into our fun, yes. fun stuff, because there's a lot of questions I want to ask you. Um, just want to update folks on the Bay Lights. The Bay Lights is uh, an amazing project, uh, art project, art like light as art sure. project um, that artist Leo Villarreal um, put on an existing structure. And the existing structure is the Bay Bridge. Yes. So this thing is going to be up for you know, probably indefinitely, they say two years. But I was up there watching them install the lights yeah. in early January. And last week, or actually by the time people see this, it'll be a few weeks now, the lights went on. Yes. And it's absolutely mesmerizing. Yeah, it is. And so one of our colleagues here, Emery Hudson, um, with GTV, we went up to the city for the unveiling of these lights. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to show you know, viewers uh, a little bit of that action. Oh, that'd be nice. Yeah, so, yeah, so right let's, let's take a look yeah. at that. The most inspiring thing to see in 2013 is finally going to be seen. Tonight is the night. The Bay Lights come on. Artist Leo Villarreal's inspiring project of 25,000 white LED bulbs, amazing algorithms. They all go on live tonight. It's an amazing tribute to our community on a project that really, from the beginning, faced three levels of impossibility. The impossibility of getting it permitted, the impossibility of actually building the piece, designing it, and putting it onto this structure. And, and the impossibility of, of getting it funded, private funded entirely. 
this is in fact a, a beacon for our arts community, for a world-class city, uh, and it has uh, the uh, ability to attract some uh, 50 million dollars of contributions to our economic vitality. When we unveil this tonight, the feeling that I'm going to be having, the instantaneous feeling is going to be we just want another World Series. When Ben first came to me with the idea of the Bay Lights, I was Im Im immediately drawn to the idea of Leo on a 1.8 mile structure. I'm a huge fan of Leo's work. I'm a huge fan of the bridge, but the idea of them together was just too mind-blowing to pass up. Just as I was beginning my artist search, um, Leo came to my attention and I realized this is the absolute right artist. I'm ecstatic, you know, this is a unbelievable opportunity and, uh, you know, a, a project that could have been killed thousands of times, but here we are actually doing it. You know, I really appreciate that it can bring infrastructure back into our consciousness as we move from 30 to 50 million people or 7 to 9 billion people on the planet, 30 to 50 million in California, we need to have systems that work and infrastructure is really important. We're going to need to re-imagine uh, how we're going to make that happen as a society. So we have a shimmering beacon of, uh, of reminder here. This project provides an opportunity to bring San Francisco world-class art and I think it also brings a sense of community. You can see how people are gathered and rallied around this wonderfully positive thing happening here on the Bay Bridge. So what did you find most challenging? I mean, I can't wrap my mind around stringing, you know, up a Christmas tree. So 25,000 individual bulbs. 525 feet over the water on a, on a piece of infrastructure that, you know, hundreds of thousands of people are using every day. And, you know, it's tough. Yeah, it's a very harsh condition. So it's been very, very challenging. And, and, you know, going up there on the bridge and doing some cable walks, you gain a lot of respect for the scale of what we're dealing with. And, you know, it's... Uh, it's a lot different than doing it in Photoshop. From day one, I mean, we spend a lot of time in the planning and design of the project, so we make sure the construction goes smooth, and that paid off very well. And that's what we did. You know, we did our very comprehensive test in the last couple of weeks. You know, we actually hooked up the computers and checked every component, all the 25,000 LEDs, all the cables, all the boxes, scanned them through to make sure there is no issue. Luckily, we had less than 1% issue that we had to fix, and we fixed that, and we are ready for tonight. And here we are celebrating perhaps the most important thing, and that is the remarkable talent and the ingenuity and the creativity of a city that not only tolerates its diversity, but celebrates it each and every day. And we're celebrating the twinning of our creativity, our artistic community, and the remarkable technology that permeates not only San Francisco, but this entire state. You know, I'm pinching myself. I can't believe the moment is actually here. But here we are, 1.8 miles long, 25,000 lights, and uh, monumental public art. So here we go. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. There it is. It is on. Wow. So here we go. The algorithms begin. Two years. How fantastic. Look at that. Unbelievable. Look at that. Now that is truly a spectacular piece of artwork. Wow. There it is, San Francisco, the Bay Lights. All right, so that was, that was the Bay Lights. Mm, pretty wow. inspiring. Pretty incredible. Yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah. It's pretty good. I'm yeah. just I'm mesmerized by that. So, um, well, Sister Monica is here, and we have a lot to talk about. Thank you. Well, I'm glad to be here. Thank you for it's being wonderful. here. wonderful, yes. Yeah. It's, it's great that thank you're... Thank you. Well, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, you know, I want to start because, you know, our community was hit so hard, you know, in the last month with, yeah. with the deaths of officers Baker and Butler on, on, on February 26th. Mm. And I know that you 
yourself contributed something, you gave back in, in a way that you can, which is singing. And can you talk about um, what that was like? Because you sang at Loudon Nelson Center, is that yes. correct? Like the, the following day or following night or something? Well, yeah. I, I was scheduled to be in Santa Cruz that day. And um, it just was on my heart when I came to Santa Cruz to stop what I was going to do and to move over to the Loudon Nelson Center where the vigil was going on. Hmm. And when I walked in the room, there was such a thickness of mourning and grief that, it, you know, it was palpable. You know, you could, you could really sense that people were really sort of in a zone of it. And so I walked around, I looked at the candles, I looked at the pictures and all the flowers and what have you. And I walked up to Cynthia, I think we used to be the, the former mayor. And I asked her, I said, can I sing a song? Because hmm. it just was on my heart that, that something needed to be lifted and uh, the people needed to be lifted, actually. And so she said, yeah, sing one. And so I went by the pictures and the candles and what have you, and I just closed my eyes and started singing Amazing Grace. Hmm. And there was a lot of chatter going on, but all of a sudden there was no chatter. And people were holding hands and... People were crying and, and just getting the release that they needed, you know, because yeah. you can hold it in only but so long. Yeah, exactly. And um, after that, people were very happy that that something, someone, some voice, you know, came along to help them out of the space that they were in. And then they went back to chattering, but I could tell that the mood was different. You yeah. Know, that people were holding one another, talking to one another, being neighborly and doing, having that community spirit. And, you know, I just thank God for giving me the gift and the thought to do that at that, at that very moment. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah. I think, um, you know, when, when things like this happen, obviously getting together and, and being among others and being within your community, yeah. you know, that, that generates something, that sort of a catalyst for some type of, you know, if not healing initially like in that moment, but, <clears throat> you know, it sort of sends a ripple effect to get get there at some yes. point. So it does, and I, I think that um, people know that. And I also think that um, you know, music is is such a um, an equalizer of emotions. You know, it just sort of levels. You know, it's, it's a language in and of itself. Yeah, and it it just brings a certain amount of calm, depending on what kind it is. So it just, I'm glad that I was there, and I'm glad that we had a chance to share with one another and. You know, I've been in Santa Cruz for almost 20 years. Hmm. So um, to be Decades. able to give back to that community, to give to the community in that way, was very special for me because it was also my loss. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, all of our losses, yeah. definitely. But, you know, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, when we were thinking about, you know, who to have on the next JTV, yeah. you know, who, I, I was sort of, my mind just went numb because it's like, and, and I thought of you because, I know of your work because right. you know I've been at the paper for over a decade, and yeah. and, and we've done stories eons. And, eons it's, <laughs> I, the things I've seen and the stories I could say <laughs> yes. that I didn't write. I know, I know. Because I'm kind, uh, ish. Um, but you know, I thought you know who, but you were the first person that came to mind because I felt you you hold a presence, you have a presence, and you hold a space for something like healing. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to thank you for, you know, yeah, thank, thank you for you. being here. Thank you. you yeah. know, so you're, you know, as we merge a little bit, you know, we're talking about music, but, you know, you're from, you're from the Midwest. I'm from the Midwest. Oh, yeah, I'm from the Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> I landed here, but I'm from the Midwest. Yeah, yeah I, I got, I got, I don't know if I landed here, I got yeah. pulled here. I don't know what happened. <laughs> how, how did I get here? Um, <laughs> But uh, you're from Gary, Indiana. Gary, Indiana. I'm from Chicago. Yes. yes All right. Yes. So, uh, and you've been in Santa Cruz for 20 years. Yes. All right. So, but but take me back. You know, when you were back in the Midwest, yes. when did music like first? When did you first find music? How did you know that you were you know you know standing underneath a shower of, of creativity that was just? I had no clue, really. I was told to go to church at seven, and I went to church, and they heard me singing along with the old missionaries, and they said. Um, get on up there and sing that song. <clears throat> and I got up on up there and sang the songs with them. And huh. the next thing they were knowing, they were saying, you sing too loud. <laughs> <laughs> How old were you? 
I was about seven. You were seven. seven wow. Seven. Okay. And I had no control of my voice at that time. I still don't have control of my voice. <laughs> um, and then, you know, as time went on, I just continued to sing and realized that it was something for me to do. But I also had a period where uh, doo woppers were singing on the corner. I don't know if you know about those days. I do know of doo woppers. Yes, yeah. Back in the Midwest, there were a lot of quartets that were singing, and they would go out, go out <laughs> on the corner, and they would doo wop, and they would you know, dance with their doo-wop and all of that. And I, I thought that was fascinating to see wow. people doing that. And then after that, I said, mm, one day I want to sing. But I didn't think I was going to do it, like, professionally. I mm. thought it would be just a little side project. And now it has taken me around the world. Wow. Yeah. You have been everywhere. You, you, well, <clears throat> for, for those who, the few that do not know much about System Monica, <laughs> which I would be surprised if you don't, I mean, <laughs> you, you do tour the world yeah. and sing at a lot of festivals. Yes. Um, you've won a lot of awards. You've, you've been, you know, here. They, they dub you the Blues Lioness. Yes, they yeah. do. Yes. Yeah. So when did, first, when did things first get kicking professionally for you? Like, do you, what was the turning point, do you think? You know, I think the per turning point <clears throat> was moving from the clubs to doing concerts and festivals because that's when you're in front of lots of people and so you have an opportunity to share love and energy yeah. with a mass group of people and um, then the next time things got really serious in up the ante for me was after I got healed and survived cancer Yeah, because then people felt like if she's going to live she must be going to sing something and I started singing songs that were closer to my own experience hmm. and truer to my heart. You know, they weren't always about the dance and the rock and roll, but they were also deep and meaningful. And uh, that became a different level. You know, you always go through life and certain levels hit, and that's what happened for me then. Wow. So now I'm now I'm just singing from my heart because it just feels good. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, you know, it's 2013. We should be doing that type of stuff, How right? About that? Right. I mean, yeah. we don't have. I don't think we have. We don't have any time to waste. No, we don't. You know, but no. uh, remind me when you were going. What what years during your cancer? That was in um, <clears throat> two thousand two when I came back. I had a twenty one date concert or state uh, concert tour in Holland, the Netherlands, and I felt a lump under my arm. Wow. And then um, in two thousand three, I started chemotherapy, and I finished all my treatment in two thousand five. So it's basically been about 10 years wow. since I've been through that process. Wow, congratulations, yeah. I mean, good for you. Yeah. What, um, you know, a lot of people talk about, you know, you hear a lot of people who do have cancer and survive cancer and the things that help them get through it, but what do you think helped you get through it? Music, Yeah. music and my faith. <clears throat> my belief that, you know, I had a deeper, more meaningful purpose in life hmm. um, and I needed to fulfill that purpose. And also people, you know, people in the community. Um, I had people who were really warriors for me. You know, they interceded. They brought me food. They helped me go for walks on West Cliff. You know, they sent me cards. They helped me to have faith that my hand and arm would work again. And, and so it was, it was a beautiful thing. Wow. Yeah. What do you love most about singing, performing? Oh, God, it just gets into your sails, you know. It just feels so good. Yeah. Um, even, you know, even if I'm just doing it, it used to be when there are five or 10 or 15 people, uh, 15,000 people around, then that would be the best, the ultimate feeling. But now as I've matured as an artist, um, I find that even if it's just one person there and I can start singing and it impacts them in a way and it makes me feel that I'm impacting them favorably, that's all it needs, all mm. it takes. Because I feel it and they feel it and it's just... It's a gift. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good for you. Yeah. Um, we're going to play a little word association okay. in a little bit. Mm. But um, I just want to remind people, you have 11 CDs? Yes, I do. Yeah. 11 CDs. Your last one, the title of which, Living in the Danger Zone? Living in the Danger Zone. <laughs> <laughs> and that came out not too long ago, like about a year ago, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so Living in the Danger Zone, where'd you come up with that, <laughs> that, that well, title? Well, you know, the truth be told, I was um, having some fun with... Uh, some people in life yeah. and I called myself in relationship and it's dangerous when you fall in love and you let your heart go out there all the way and in it um, oh in it and people you know, watching in it? when you when you get to that point in life when you're ready to surrender and be vulnerable 
that's a dangerous zone to be in. Mm. Uh, but if you can get in it and play with it and have fun with it, then you can live it and it's okay. Yeah. But you just have to know who to trust your heart with. Nice. Yeah. Wow, I just, I just can. Can we just like hang out all the time? Come on, let's just, I just have, some like coffee. have coffee all the time. Ooh. I mean, you could be. I don't have to pay a therapist. Do no, we, I know. We could just talk. No, no, you'd have to. Do you know how much I pay? Eventually, <laughs> I'll buy your coffee. <laughs> oh God, you only knew how much thousands of dollars. I anyway. know, I know, I know, I know. <clears throat> all right, um, you mentioned that. Some of your inspirations, uh, Etta James, yes. Coco Taylor, Ruth yes. Brown, Katie Webster. Yes. Etta, Etta's amazing. Yeah, she, she, she actually inspired me quite a bit because when I started out singing, I sang songs by Roberta Flack, Gladys Knight, Aretha Franklin, um, Natalie Cole. Those are sort of the, the women, Phoebe Snow hmm. and uh, Phyllis Hyman. If you, those are Midwest girls, yeah. you know what I yeah. mean? And um, when I started to sing, someone said, you need to listen to Etta James. And I thought, Etta James, I had never heard of her. And so I listened to her and I went, oh my God, ooh, she sounds like me. <laughs> <laughs> but the truth is I sounded like her. Yeah. We have a similar timbre in our voice, you know? And, and when I had that experience, one of the things I did was I stopped listening to Etta because I, I enjoyed her for a few weeks and then I said, okay, I gotta stop listening because I want to have my own voice. Yeah. But I do consider her one of the mothers of my blues. Those four women have paved the way for me as an artist, as a vocalist, as a songwriter and performer. Hmm. Yeah. Man, it's awesome, it's really awesome. Okay, I wanna tell people that you had, is it true that you know March 17th, Redwood City. You're gonna be in Redwood City, right? No, that was that was last year. Let me see. Am I gonna last be year? March seventeenth. No, but May the eleventh. May the eleventh. I will be at Don Quixote's with That's the Sister it. Monica band. May eleventh, Don mm -hmm. Quixote's. And guess what? What? It's gonna be a Taurus party because I'm a Taurus. You're a Taurus. I'm a Sag. We might get along well because you're Earth. I'm Earth. I have last Scorpio in my chart. I need, I need Ugh, Earth. I got a little bit of Scorpio, I know, too. I don't it's, know. It's okay. May not work. Uh, we'll be, we'd be emotional. Yeah, we would. Well. We'd be quite flaming emotional. Don't you think? <laughs> All right. Um, a little bit of word association. Yes. And then you're going to sing a very special song. I don't want to let okay. people know yet. Okay. Um, um, uh, chocolate or vanilla? Vanilla. Vanilla. Slippers or socks? Socks. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Coffee. With sugar? No. No sugar. No. Cream? Yeah. Okay, cream. Uh, strawberry or butterscotch? Strawberry. Really? Mmm. Oh, wow, yeah, nice. Yeah, I love them strawberries. Cool. Hmm. Mm -hmm. What's some of the best advice you've been given about life? Luck doesn't happen. You have to be prepared for opportunities when they come. Oh, I like that. Oprah Winfrey told me that person. Yeah. Person. Oprah from Chicago, our, Chicago, our people. Yeah. 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 Man. Um, all right. And then what's the most interesting thing you've been learning about yourself lately? That I like juicing. You like juicing? I love juicing. Oh, uh -huh. okay. Oh, man. I'm like doing the whole kale, cucumber, ginger root. Nice. The whole thing. And... I like Organo Gold Coffee. Organo Gold Coffee? I've look never heard of it. Look it up. I'll Google. That's all I'll say. I'm good at Google. Yeah. I can do that. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's for been being fun. here. It's been real. Sister Monica, <laughs> Don Quixote's May 11th. You a got, dance party. You got to go. Mm -hmm. It's going to be great. Tourist party, right? Oh, yeah. Um, and so we're going to zip over and have you sing. A very beautiful song. What are you going to sing? Oh, something that feels right for me and right. right for the moment. All right. Yeah. So, you, thank you for joining us, Sister Monica. Thank and you. Um, here it's we been go. Fun. Listen to this. Yeah. Imagine a world of peace. Imagine
imagine no hunger. Imagine the troops are all coming home. No guns, no violence. Imagine. Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try No hell below us Above us only sky Imagine all the people Living for today Imagine there's no country It isn't hard to do mm -hmm. Nothing to kill or die for No religion to Oh, imagine All the people living life in peace. You may say I'm a dreamer. Well, I'm not the only one. I hope someday you will join us. And the world will live as one Live as one Imagine Imagine no possessions I wonder if you can For greed, hunger, a brotherhood of man. Oh, imagine all the people sharing all the world. You may say I'm a dreamer. But I'm not the only one No, I'm not I hope someday you will join us Come on And the world will live as one